the last type of volume we're going to calculate is if we rotate and we cannot find the volume by discs or washers or it's somehow impractical because of the way the equation is written to find it by disc or washers, we will use the volume of cylindrical shells. So I'm going to draw you some pictures so we can figure out how to come up with the formula and then I will go into some examples with the last video for the week. So if I take the following region, let's say I have a curve that looks like this, and I want to rotate this about the y-axis. So if I rotate it about the x-axis, I would be able to use this method. But if I rotate it about the y-axis, notice the shape I get. Okay, you would think you'd be able to use disks. Well, I guess I could use disks on this method. Okay, I could use a disk across here. I would have to break it up into two regions because I have different equations for those. But there's another way I could do this. Okay, the other way I could do this is basically draw a cylinder. Okay, so I have a cylinder. And what we can think of is if I now take a top-down view, I can have a really small cylinder, then I can have another cylinder that goes around the outside of that one, another cylinder that goes around the outside of that one, and I can have a whole bunch of cylinders that are wrapped around each other. The center cylinder is going to have this height. The outer cylinders, so if I go out here, the outer cylinder is going to have this height. And then what I want to do is I want to add up the volumes of each one of those cylinders. And actually, these aren't just cylinders, they're cylindrical shells. Because when I'm adding them up, I have no volume on the in, in, inside of it. So if I look at an arbitrary cylindrical shell, so I have a shell here. Okay, an arbitrary cylindrical shell, I'll try to draw it for you, is going to look like this. And I want to be able to find the volume of a cylindrical shell, then add up the volume of a whole bunch of cylindrical shells. So first thing I want to do is I want to figure out what the volume of this shell is. Well from middle school, we know that I can take a cylinder, I can cut it, and then I can lay it flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that cylinder, and I'm going to roll it out flat. Okay, and this is the shape that I get. Okay, so what this distance is, is that distance around there, which is the circumference. And the circumference that I am thinking about, it's going to be 2 times pi times some radius. And I'm going to just put a little star here, just so we can talk about it as a radius. Well, the other part I have here is what I'm going to call the thickness of my shell. Okay, and then I'm going to add up all of my shells. Okay, so I need to sum all of my shells. Okay, so I'm going to take 2 pi times the r times the thickness. Well, let's think about what my r is. Well, my r is the distance between my center of rotation and the curve. Okay, it's the distance between the center of rotation and the curve. Okay, so in this case, it would be whatever this curve was in terms of from here to here. Okay, so now that I can see that, I also need to take into account, well, how tall is my shell? And if I take that and sum all of those up, 
as each of my shell slices get thinner and thinner and thinner, or the number of shells goes up to infinity, I can come up with the following equation. It's the summation, it's the limit, as n approaches infinity, of the summation of k equals 1 to n. Well, I need the volume, which is going to be this times this times this. Well, let's look to see what that r is. That r is the distance between here and here. The distance between the origin and the x-axis, in this case, is just going to be x. But I'm just going to put an r there, because if I put an x there, it only works if I rotate around the y-axis. I put a y there, it only works if I rotate around the x-axis. If I leave the r there, I can rotate it around any axis. That's the y-axis, x-axis, parallel to the y-axis, or parallel to the x-axis. So it's the limit of 2 pi r times the thickness. And the thickness of my shell um, is going to be at the delta x because that's each one of those increments is going to be my delta x and times the height of my shell. So this is the circumference times the thickness. And now I need the height. And if I'm doing it in terms of x, it would be f of x, sub k star. This r, if I'm doing it in terms of x, would be x sub k star. Okay. Notice I have a limit of a Riemann sum where 2 pi are constants. So the final formula you're going to get is 2 pi times the integral from the smallest shell I can make, which in this case is going to be 0, to the biggest shell I can make. So I'm going to put a to b of x, f of x, dx. Okay. I always write it when I am doing the problems is I do not memorize it this way. I memorize it as the integral from A to B of the circumference times the thickness or times the height times the thickness. That's the way I memorize it. Circumference is 2 pi x Height is f of x, and the thickness is dx. Alternately, if it's around the y-axis, it would be the integral from a to b of 2 pi y, f of y, dy. My recommendation is you memorize this formula as it's the integral of the circumference times the height times the thickness. Remember, 6.3 formulas had a pi in them. The 6.4 formulas are all going to have a 2 pi in them. And remember, 2 pi is a constant, so we'll be able to bring it out in front of the integral before we do our anti-differentiation and evaluation. So next thing is going to be our examples for section 6.4, and that will be it for this week.